Hey guys, welcome back to Ganchi Plans. Ignore all of this and the background. We're not going to be doing that today. I just wanted to say hi. Happy New Year. Uh, today we're going to be going over every insert in my shop, um, GanchiPlans.com slash shop. And I just kind of wanted to go through them and show you what they are um, and then maybe a little bit, you know, some notes on how to use them um, and maybe get you, you know, interested if there's something you didn't realize were there or what they're for. So we're just going to go all the way through the initial 20 designs that uh, are on the shop right now in January 2021. Um, so the very first is, um, they're all going to be labeled, by the way, with two letters for the size and then the three three digit um, number for the design. So I'm going to just be showing you the pocket size because that's kind of like the default that I start with the design process. Um, so first off, there's this one is a freebie. 001 is just a grid page. This is a four millimeter dot. So that should match your um, Hobonichi weeks at least, I think. Um, that might be a little bit smaller, but for millimeter, I like because I feel like five is just a little bit too big. I do tend to write kind of small, but it's not like so small. So hopefully you like that. This is available for free. Um, O2, this is the one I'm the most excited about. And you will see this in a video about, I think next week I will be doing, you know what? Yeah, yeah, it's not this next Thursday, the week after. I'm going to be doing a weekly plan with me. But the idea here, it's split. So you have your work week on the left and then the weekend on the right. As well as a sort of tracker or I actually have like half of it set up as a to-do list and the other half as a tracker using the Alistair method here, which I will get to in a second. Um, so I just kind of like, I, I really didn't see any inserts anywhere that had separate anything for you know, your work week and your weekend. And if you work a nine to five, like I do, um, it's different. Like the weekends, you need more space for projects. And it's just, this is, this is what I came up with. So I hope you like it. Uh, that's number two. Insert number three is just a straight checklist. Uh, so I use this all the time. I've been working on my 2021 setup. That'll be Thursday's video. And I've been using this for a lot of stuff. So this is of the same four millimeter dot grid, but it's got these mini check boxes. Then 04, this is called the Eisenhower matrix. Um, and if you're not familiar with it, basically along the columns are urgent and not urgent, and then the rows are important or not important. So it helps you to kind of think about your to-do list in a different way. And maybe it's, you know, not everything is quite as important as it seems. So it helps you to isolate the things that really need to get done today versus the things that maybe you shouldn't be worrying about, things that you can, um, delegate or things that you can put off for later. This one is level 10 life. I'm going to be posting a photo on my Instagram and you'll also see this in my, um, my 2021 setup. I actually found this to be even cooler than I originally expected. Um, the idea is you fill out your 10 categories of different areas of your life. So I have like faith, kids, marriage, you know, finances, job, blah, blah, blah. And then fill out, um, sort of the progress bar of zero to 10 of how you feel that's going in your life. And then once you've sat down and sort of evaluated those different areas of your life, you can put some goals. There are not 10 lines here, in, at least in the pocket size. I think there's more lines in bigger sizes. Um, but I kind of like that forces you to sort of narrow it down and not set goals for everything. Um, because my plan is to redo this evaluation every couple of months uh, to sort of figure out what my new goals are going to be. But I'm finding this to be a really great way to start off my year and kind of decide what my sort of resolutions are going to be for at least the first month or two. Number 06. This is kind of inspired by Annie Smith does sort of just a a straight checklist or you know, something in her. She has a page. It's like a blank page in her planner where she keeps track of like what sizes her kids are all in. And so the idea here, and this can be for your own kids or for your grandkids, your friends, kids, whoever you like buying clothes for, or if you go, you know, outlet shopping, <laughs> this is inspired also by my mother-in-law, um, who is for the current data of these stats and then how old they are. And then you can put what size they are in different areas, you know, different types of clothing. And then favorites as in like, what's their favorite color? What's their favorite TV show that they're going to want? You know, oh, if you see uh, something that's 3T Paw Patrol pajamas, like, all right, that would be a perfect gift. Um, so 
that's the idea is you can, you know, redo the list whenever they outgrow it. There's room for it. Maybe you could just do all you know, four kids or you could just cross it out when they outgrow a size and move on to the next checklist. But that's the idea of this one. 007. This is listed as an Alistair Week, um, but also could just be for a weekly tracker. But this is, uh, I, I really do like the Alistair Weekly, the way of thinking of things uh, where you can kind of visualize, don't check, you know, put too many dots in the M column because that's, <laughs> don't front load your week on a, a Monday. So you can list everything for the week and then assign it a date. You can put a little dot there and cross it off when it's done. Or if it doesn't get done that day, you can migrate it to the next column. Um, it just helps me to visualize across the span of a week what, um, you know, when I can do different tasks. So, but this can also just be for a straight weekly tracker. If you have a lot of things that you want to do every single day, that works too. Then 008, this one is also the Alistair method, but like the original Alistair method, which it was originally conceived to be a feature log. So you put the task here or the or event or whatever, and then if it's in January, you put the date in the January column. And then the next task say is in June. So you put a, one in the June column and the next task is in March. And then you put a date in the March column. So when the month comes around, you just go down the column and you have got, you know, dates here all the way down for that column so that you don't have to go like digging through a pile. And also you don't have to set aside space and then run out of space for each month. It's really nice to, you know, just have it laid out that way. So there's six columns on each page. And uh, the way this is, you'll notice January through June, then July through December. On this side, it's backwards, January through June, July through December. So there's two different ways to print this out, basically. Uh, if it's back to back, you'll end up with both. Um, so if you want to have it open like this with the rings in the middle, then you can use this top half. And if you want to have it printed back to back, then you would use this half with this half printed on the back. Um, the It's the same setup with larger sizes that don't have two copies per page. Um, you'll just want to look and see either print page one and two or page three and four. Um, so I just kind of liked that. It's easier, like you can't always trim things so that the margin is on the other side, but it's just easier this way if there's two different versions. Here we go. Number 009 is two columns. It's just a lot of times you don't need a full page width for a list. I use this, um, and I think I will continue to use this for things that are like for my two daughters. Uh, if you have two different things going on, or if you just don't need as much space, it's it's pretty versatile and there's a lot of things you can do with this. So that's number 09. Then 10 is a double checklist. Also the same kinds of ideas. Think outside the box. This is very utilitarian, but if you have two different steps for any sort of task, then you can give yourself partial credit for doing the first column's worth of work before you get to the second column. Insert number 11 is monthly resolutions. I did a blog post about this last January about um, how I set monthly resolutions instead of a one New Year's resolution. So this has space to write what your goal is for the month, as well as a little room to write the results of that at the end of the month. And then you can set a new goal for the next month. They can be related. They don't have to be. And this is the same as the future log was. So you'll see it's January and then July. And then on the bottom or on page two, if it's a larger insert, you've got July on one side and January on the other. So you can choose to have it an open spread like this or front and back this way. Number 12 is a reusable packing list. So the idea here is uh, you have columns for five different trips here. I think there's fit six or seven on larger insert sizes. And then different sections here, um, they're sort of arbitrary sizes. So you can put like suitcase, toiletry kit, um, briefcase, car, whatever to have different, you know, categories, uh, just to make it, I, I like to have categories for my packing lists. Maybe you do too. And the idea here is you can put the things that you will generally pack whenever you go on a trip. And then every time you go on a trip, you just use a new column. Insert 13 is a package tracker. I use this a lot with my Christmas ordering. The idea here is the top larger box. You can put, you know, where the shop, where, where it's from, uh, who it's going to, when you place the order, well, no, when you place the order goes in this box, when it's shipped, when it is expected to be delivered, and then you put a check mark when it is delivered, 
And so as long as their checkbox is empty, you know that it is still on the way. Insert number 14 uh, is the un or this is the dated monthly. So it's dated because, and it has to be, because it is organized by week. So you'll see Monday through Sunday here, here. And the idea, this is the way I used to do it way back in the day, um, is you have your, uh, you know, like events here and then over here on the other, you know, opposing side is a weekly to-do list. So anything that needs to get done in this week, it doesn't have to be specifically in order, but that's, that's the design anyway. Um, so you can just have a section for each week's to-do list. And then there's extra space here to use for notes or undated tasks or whatever. Um, in the pocket size, it is smaller. It's closer to like a three and a half millimeter uh, for these lines, just to get everything to fit. In the A5, so the A6 size uh, and the personal size, it's the four millimeter dot grid again, or not dot grid, four millimeter grid again. And then in the personal size, it actually also has some uh, extra note space on the bottom just because it's a taller page. The way that this works is it comes in a three month set. So you'll see page one, you've got January, January, and then on the back of January, you can print your February, then February on the back of that, you'll print your March. Or if you don't print it back to back, you can just have it as a, an open spread with nothing on the the back side that's the way I do it so those are your options and if you do print it as like a booklet you've got uh, just like a, a grid page that you can put whatever you want on insert number 15 is also a freebie this is just lines so you can use this for anything freeform journaling lists whatever number 16 is a library book tracker now my library currently is not enforcing due dates so I'm only getting some utility out of it, but the idea here is you, the same as the package tracker, you put the book here and then the date it was checked out and the first date's due, and then whenever you renew it, you can put the additional renewed dates here, and then when it's returned, you put a check mark uh, when you don't have the book anymore. So that works for up to three renewals. Um, maybe your library does fewer, mine does three, I think that's pretty standard. And uh, that just allows you to have one space for all of it without having to like run out of room for dates. Insert 17, uh, recurring tasks. So I also set this up in my uh, January 2021 uh, plan with me. So you can take a look at that as well. The idea is you put your task here and then how often you want it to repeat it. And the last time you did it, the next time you did it. Then the next time you do it, you'll put, you know, something in this box. I put this uh, migration arrow. And so that means that this line isn't valid anymore and you move on to the next line. You'll move it to here and you put the last time that you actually did it and the next time you did it. And so that way um, everything is just straightforward. I feel like this works better than having it be like a monthly thing because sometimes you do something every three months and sometimes you do something every two weeks and neither of those is, you know, every month. So that is the idea of your recurring tasks here or also known as the last time I did Number 18 is, doesn't have a header on purpose. So I designed this and I think it's listed on the website as a breast milk tracker or pumping log. And that's what I'm using it for, but you could use it for anything where you're keeping inventory. So the idea is you take whatever notes you need for say the day or the week or whatever period of time. So I use this for my pumping at work, right? So on Monday, I take note of like the first pumping session, I got this many ounces, second this many, blah, blah, blah. Then on this side, I take note of how many bottles my daughter drank, how many ounces she drank. So then at the end, you have your total at the beginning of the day, plus your input minus your output equals the new total, which you can put here for the next, um, the next period of time. So it can be a day on the pocket size. It conveniently fits five days for a work week, but it can be whatever. And uh, yeah, I just, I didn't put a header because I figure it, it has a lot more uses than just tracking breast milk. So you can put whatever use you want in this box at the top. Number 19 is an undated daily. Uh, we've got a cat eye catching little circle here to put your date in. You can um, put maybe, you know, weather or whatever you want here, day of the week, anything you want at the top, obviously. These top three checkboxes are designed to be your top three for the day. And then 
immediately below that is the rest of the checklist for the day. I find that if you have your top three and then it's separated from your checklist, like I will focus on one or the other and it's hard to see them all as one to-do list. So here you have the most important things at the top, but everything else is in one to-do list. A little bit of space here for hourly um, you know, event planning. So the pocket size goes from 7 p.m. to 6 p.m. The other two sizes go from 6 to 8 uh, because there's just a little bit more space, but I didn't want to sacrifice the to-do list space for this. So that I think should cover most work days at least. And then two little spaces here. You can use that for, I don't know, menu tracking or habit tracking or I don't know, whatever you want to use it for. Um, multiple different kinds of uses trying to be as versatile as possible. And then last but not least is insert number 20 is an undated monthly. So it still has that column that you can use to put Monday through Friday. You can also use it for anything, just, you know, indicators, icons, whatever. You can write your month at the top. And then over here, you can use this for whatever you want to, but the idea is it's a uh, habit tracker. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six items, and then they're numbered across here. So that way it's able to fit and still reference across like this. So you can just trace across line one goes over here, line two goes over here. And then that uh, you just reference what's happening. And then this is a general to-do list. You can use it for anything. Um, the other larger sizes have seven across, so if you're more creative than me, you might be able to figure out a way to make those the seven days of the week, but I don't know how you would do that. If you figure it out, tag me and let me know. And those are all of my inserts. I hope that you enjoy them. If you have any creative uses for any of these, I would love to see them, so tag me on Instagram. And again, messy room, don't care. Have a great start of your 2021, and I will see you guys in the next video on Thursday. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.